Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to plot the orbitals or densities for molecular as well as periodic systems using the Ripper module of TurboMol. And in this tutorial, I assume that you already know how to perform ground state, molecular or periodic calculations using this Ripper module. So we will not be covering how to create the control file and also I assume that you know the um, the path or like you know the uh, path to the executable of the ripper module or um, you already have the paths defined so that when you type in ripper then it already shows up so i assume something like that is the case so first of all um, let's try to plot the molecular orbitals as well as the densities for a molecular system such as benzene so here um, as you can see on my screen i have already the oxbasis basis control file and everything set up um, to begin our calculations um, and I did everything using the terminal using the define and everything else in this uh, tutorial will also be done using the terminal so just um, bear that in mind so just to have a quick look at the control file over here so as you can see I already have the um, keyword EFT with the functional as well as the grid size already defined and then I also have the auxiliary basis as well because these are the two most important things that you need um, for a calculation using Ripper. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch terminal from within this directory so that I already um, have the terminal um, within um, open and set to this working directory. So here it is, uh, my working directory, benzene. And uh, as I said, I assume that you know how to perform a ground state calculation. So usually, um, on your PC, you might have already Ripper uh, pointing to the correct path for the executable. You can check that by giving the command which Ripper or maybe which um, Ripper SMP or something like that. So as you can see, uh, it points to this path over here. However, um, I'm going to use uh, another uh, path uh, for my Ripper uh, executable, which I have already copied and I'm just going to paste that over here. So let me just expand this. So as you can see, um, so first of all, I have the path to my turbo ball directory, then the bin directory containing the binaries, and then I have the system name, and then uh, followed by SMP, indicating that I'm going to be running a parallel calculation, and then Ripper underscore SMP. In case you want to do a serial calculation, then you just get rid of SMP from the path, and um, you can see it in your directories that will have something um, here. So anyways, coming back, so okay. I have the paths to the um, Ripper executable and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, um, direct the output to a file called output and then hit enter and then I'm going to open back the directory and double click on this output file and see the output and as you can see the calculation is already complete um, within like um, 14 seconds on my virtual machine and we have converged the ground state um, calculation so next we want to plot the molecular orbitals so in order to do that just go ahead and open the control file um, using your favorite editor you can also use uh, terminal uh, nano or vi rather vim and then what you're going to do is somewhere in the control file you create a new block called point val per and then you are going to give the format uh, for the cube uh, for the density or the orbital files and I strongly recommend using the cube format although uh, the default is PLT but I find that cube format is widely supported in each and every visualization software out there so it is very flexible so um, next what you're going to do is you're going to do orbs and then the number of orbitals that you want to plot so let's say for this example I want to plot the homo as well as the lumo so has as well as the lowest occupied molecular orbitals so there will be two of them so I do orbs and then the number of orbitals that I want to plot and then simply you do k space 1 space 1 space 1 a and then the index of the molecular orbital so let's just go ahead and open the terminal and do the command i curve with the working directory and see which is the orbital index for the highest occupied molecular orbital and we are, and we, here we see that the 21st or, orbital is the homo as well as the 22nd orbital is the lumo so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write down 21st for homo and then again k space 1 space 1 space 1 space a and then 22nd now you might be wondering what the hell are these k 1 1 1 and then a 
So basically, as you know that uh, Ripper supports periodic calculations, so you also have to keep in mind this K points. So this K stands for K point, and then one and one and one are just the indices for the, for the K points. You'll understand it more when we get to the periodic calculation, but for a molecular calculation, essentially you're doing a gamma point calculation, so that is why you have everything set to one. And then A basically stands for alpha and B stands for beta. So um, in case you are performing an open shell or an unrestricted calculation, then you might have alpha as well as um, beta electrons. So that is why um, you will do A for alpha and B for beta. However, in this case, we are performing a closed shell calculation as indicated by, by this um, line over here. As you can see, all the orbitals are occupied uh, um, with uh, are doubly occupied. So um, we are performing a closed shell calculation. That is why we just said A. Um, for both of the orbitals and also in case you need more information about this then you can always follow the TurboMole documentation available on the official TurboMole.org website under the documentation tab and then uh, for, for Ripper you can follow the seventh chapter and in particular 7.3.8 for the calculations of densities and molecular orbitals on grids. So coming back, so now that we have the um, control file all set up in order to um, plot the HOMO as well as the LUMO orbital, let's go ahead and open the terminal back again and um, hit Q to exit out of the IGER and then just go ahead and probably clear the terminal and then I'll again paste my um, river SMP executable path and then what, in, what is interesting is Actually, you don't need to perform the whole ground state calculation once again uh, in order to plot these molecular orbitals and densities. So as you have already seen that I, uh, a few moments ago, I performed a full ground state calculation. I have some quantities like Ripper, uh, sorry, some files like Ripper.bands, Ripper.bands, all energies and occupations um, in my um, directory. So what I can do is I can just use these uh, to plot these um, molecular orbitals uh, in and to tell Ripper that not to, perf to not to perform a per complete SCF calculation, what you do is you give the flag proper. So what this uh, essentially means is that you are doing only a properties run. So it will, it will not perform SCF and just use the converged SCF orbitals from the previous um, ground state calculation, SCF calculation, and then just go ahead and direct the output to something like output MO. And then hit enter. So as you can see, I already have two cube files, and let me just go ahead and quickly open the output MO. And um, what you'll notice is that this time you don't have any SCF calculation, but you do have a heading called, or rather a header called calculation of quantities on grid, and it says that it is um, plotting the orbital one of two um, and writing it to the file orb k111 a21 real. And since it is a molecule, you only have real orbitals. So yeah, so it plots those two and also um, gets done really quickly. So coming back to the directory, uh, you can see those cube files over here. Now, before we visualize these orbitals, let me also quickly show you how to plot the densities. So just open the control file and um, here within the point file for um, block, just um, probably we'll comment out this odd section because this time we don't need to plot any orbitals but just the density and this is really simple you just um, say dense uh, under the dollar point value per block within the dollar point value per block and then just go ahead and open the terminal back again um, have your um, path to the repo executable in my case I'm using SMP for parallel and then just again give proper and then direct the output to something like output dense and hit enter so again I'll open the directory, go to output dense, and as you can see, the calculation is already complete. And it says that it is um, calculating quantities on grid, plotting density on a file called td.cube. So again, I'll open the working directory, and I notice that this file td.cube is here indeed. So now um, we are going to plot these, and my favorite way to plot these is using a software called PrizX, um, which has been developed by me actually. And um, the reason I find it good is because it produces really publishing quality um, visualizations and um, it runs on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Android even. 
And yeah, so, but uh, since I'm uh, using a virtual machine and it is a pretty certainly high quality output, so let me just go ahead and copy these uh, cube files to my main uh, machine. Okay, so I have copied these uh, three cube files to my main uh, macOS machine and now I'm going to pop open QuizX. Select some resolution and hit play. And then I'm going to choose the directory where I have pasted them. So I pasted them within the documents and within the documents I have them in Amodense tutorial and then here they are. So let's have a look at the density first of all. So here it is. So as you can see this is the density of the benzene molecule and yeah and you can adjust the isosurface settings using this uh, tab over here and now let's just quickly visualize the homo so here is the homo and now let's visualize the lumo and here is the lumo so yeah that is it Okay, so now that we have already seen how to plot molecular orbitals or densities for molecular system, let's see how to do the same for a periodic system. So here I have a directory NACL and I've already performed uh, and converged NACF calculation using Ripper um, in order uh, so that we don't waste any time over here. And let me just give you a quick look at the control file. So as you can see here, um, I have periodicity set to 3 with the cell parameter defined um, in angstroms and um, as you can see we have a cubic cell um, and the most important thing is that we have k points now. So that is a crucial thing. So let me just now go ahead and show you the output file also because that is also really important in order to construct the input uh, to get the orbitals or densities. Um, so in the output file, what we are going to do is we are going to find the header um, called K point mesh. That is this one. So as you can see that uh, in the input file, we defined a three by three by three uh, K point grid and more information how Ripper um, creates these uh, K point grids or uh, how it forms this K point sampling can be found in the turbo mode manual section 7.2.3. So basically um, what we get is for a 3x3x3 three by three by three grid, we get the following coordinates. So we, uh, so Tabomol or rather Ripper basically creates these gamma centered uh, grids. So that is why you have um, 1 by 3 that is minus, zero, uh, minus 1 by 3 that is minus 0 0.333 three, and then 0 and then 0 0.3. So these are the three essential coordinates and then you have the different combinations of these three coordinates. Um, let's say you want to plot the highest occupied orbital and at the gamma point um, for NACL. So let's see how do we do that. So um, so what we are going to do is we are going to the, go to the working directory, open our terminal. And now what we are going to do is we are going to give Iker to find out the highest occupied orbital. That would be 56 as you can see over here. And now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open the control file create a new data group or block whatever you want to call it called point val per and i'll set the um, format um, for these um, orbital files to q and then i'm going to give orbs one because we are going to just plot the first uh, homo uh, orbital and then what i'll do is i'll do k for k point and then for gamma point i need a uh, the, the key point coordinates are 0, 0, 0. So the corresponding um, indices for that would be, uh, so as you can see, the um, gamma point corresponds to the second uh, coordinate. So what I'll do is I'll put 2, 2, 2 for gamma point because uh, the second index uh, corresponds to the 0 coordinate. So 0, 0, 0 would be 2 to 2 in the control file. And then you have A because uh, it is again a closed shell system and then 56 for HOMO and then just save the control file go ahead and open the terminal and uh, the good thing is you don't need to run uh, the uh, time, time consuming uh, Ripper SCF uh, for a periodic system once again. 
You can just paste the path to the repair executable or in case your paths are already uh, defined then you can just repair SMP and then um, you do the flag proper and then drag the output to something like output um, MO and then just go ahead and see the output and here you can see that it is indeed calculating the quantity on the grid and it is actually um, storing this in the file called rk222 a56 real so that is because for the gamma point um, you only have our real orbitals so uh, in if, if you open the directory you see that uh, you have a cube file over here now let me demonstrate that in case I plot this not for the gamma point or some any of or for some any other point like 2 to 1 so that would mean 0 0 and minus 0 0.3 because the first coordinate is minus 0 0.3 so 0 0 minus 0 0.3 k point then uh, if you run it again for k2 um, and hit enter then you will notice that in this output file output mk2 you will notice now our um, ripper is calculating uh, the orbitals um, real contribution the imaginary part as well as the absolute value so that would be the square of the real as, and plus the imaginary part so now you will see that you have all these uh, files so the 222 two, two file this one is for gamma point and these three are for the uh, 0 0 minus 0 0.33 k point that we defined and yeah so now we have all these four orbitals and lastly also let's just quickly go ahead and open the control file and find the point well for keyword over here and then delete the orbs thing and just put in dense for density and also you can do all of these at once you don't really need to uh, so i'm doing it separately just to show you this um, but you can basically give dense and orbs um, together and also um, you will find all these input files and directories in the description down below so um, you can also um, learn very quickly so let's go ahead and save this file and open the terminal and then um, give the previous command with proper flag and save this to output dense hit enter and now if you open the output dense input output file then you will see that it is calculating this quantity on a grid and writing it to td.cube and if you open the um, ripper working directory then you notice here um, that you have this td.cube over here which stands for total density so now we have all these four files and once again I'll just go ahead and copy all of these onto my main machine and launch um, CrazyX once again I'll launch it in windowed mode once again and now I'll open the directory containing the cube files so here, so we have plotted the 56th uh, orbital for the gamma point that would be RK222. So just go ahead and double click on it. And here it is. So as you can see that um, since um, we have a very small unit cell, it looks kind of small. Um, and what you can do basically is um, just um, stick to a wireframe model, click on show cell. And yeah, and also perhaps here, um, what would be a nice is to have non-transparent orbitals so here they are so this is the um, 56 or rather the homo uh, for the NACL crystal for the gamma point and then similarly you can also plot the densities so this is the density and you can again stick to a wireframe model show cell to see the boundaries and this is the density so yeah so that is pretty much it um, that is how you plot molecular orbitals or um, 
that is how you plot orbitals or densities for molecular or periodic systems and also um, there are some settings uh, that you can also change um, for these um, orbital plotting or density plotting so if you open your control file then um, within this um, point val per block you can uh, essentially provide some settings like uh, something called NPTS uh, which is also described in the the documentation over here so basically this uh, gives you the uh, resolution of the grid that um, will be used for plotting this so by default it uses a hundred by hundred by hundred grid but that results in really large cube files like um, 12 megabytes as you can see over here and you might sometimes uh, want smaller cube files if the resolution is enough so you can change this uh, to um, use a smaller uh, grid size also, as you saw for the initial case that uh, if you're using a small unit cell, then the orbitals are also in a very small uh, compact um, cell and you don't really get uh, a nice visualization out of those. So what you can do is you can give the command or rather the keyword NIMG and then have a supercell. And this doesn't require a supercell SCF calculation, but just NIMG and the supercell um, dimensions like maybe three by three by three and it will just plot a three by three replica of the um, main unit cell um, grid quantities. So that is uh, something I find really useful. And for more settings, uh, you can check out the documentation. So yeah, that is it. You will find all these input files in the description down below. And also um, I have created some uh, dedicated tutorials on how to visualize these cube files uh, using various softwares like Prisix, uh, Vesta, JMOL, VMD, etc. So be sure to check them out as well. So yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button in case you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Have a great day.